Being in ministry is as a function of the extension of the grace upon another one. The overflow of the grace of God upon my father and the faith placed me in ministry. And I can never forget one day that I got home and I told my wife, I'm going to be ordained as a pastor. He said, she said, but you did not tell me when we were cutting that you were going to be a pastor. I said, even me, I did not know at the time when we were cutting. But it has pleased the Lord God of heaven to call me into the priestly office. Why am I saying this? Saying this, you see, a messenger does not have any worth of his own. The worth of a messenger is a function of the, of the power and the authority of the one that has sent him. And I understand very perfectly that I operate on this grace. Therefore, this grace will find expression through me to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We began a teaching series for this month of November. And we've been looking at the subject matter, what wisdom is this? What wisdom is this? And somebody is wondering, what is the big thing about wisdom? And I will want to give an answer to the wondering of such individual. Everything about life answers to wisdom. Wisdom answers to no one. Everything about, about life answers to wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 5 and in verse 15, the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture 2010. No, 2008, and I can never forget it. That scripture says, Proverbs 8.15, please. 8.15. That scripture says, By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. And that is talking about wisdom. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. In other words, you can't reign except you have access to wisdom. And in verse 16 of that same scripture, that was says, by me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. And let me shock us this morning. Every one of us, within our own sphere of influence, we judge matters every day. So if you don't have access to wisdom, you will not be able to make the right judgment. That is how vital the subject matter of wisdom is. It takes wisdom to know what to do and to do it. The singular reason between those who make resolutions at the, at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year and break it two weeks afterwards is lack of wisdom. The individual on the 31st of December, you see all manner of individuals in church. Some individuals, they are rising up straight from their drinking joint and they are finding their ways to church. That is an indication that everyone has need of God. And then the man is crying, say, Lord, this new year I will not smoke again. If I smoke, slap my mouth. You know, God is, God is not man. He judges not just the thing we say by our, our mouth, but the intent of our heart. God knew right and there that the man is not serious. So he will not even take his word for anything. If not, if God should slap his mouth, that mouth will not speak again for life. Because two weeks down the line, this man is going to turn back and he will smoke. He said, it is just this one, God. After I finish this one, I won't smoke it again. Then by the afternoon of that same day, he said, just two. Two in a day, I'm stopping it gradually. Then by the following day, it is one packet. He said, Lord, just this one packet. After this one packet, I won't do it again. Then after he said, God, help me. Next 31st of December, I'll make another resolution. He lacks wisdom. And it is not difficult to identify an, an, an individual that does not have access to wisdom. His steps and his fruit will show it. 
The Bible says, by their fruit, we will know them. The Bible says, wisdom is justified of our own children. In other words, wisdom has proof. If we lack proof, it is also because we lack wisdom. But this morning, God is going to place ample wisdom upon each one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. According to the book of James chapter 3 and in verse 15, James 3 and in verse 15, we understand that there are four kinds of wisdom. That scripture says, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. From this scripture, we understand that there are four kinds of wisdom. Number one is the earthly wisdom. And what is the meaning of earthly wisdom? This is natural or common sense wisdom. It is this natural or common sense wisdom that makes a, a newly born baby to identify that when he or she grabs his or her mother's breast, he does not put it in his ear, he put it in his mouth. I watched a video some time ago. The baby was just born, covered with all the soot and blood, wrapped in a swaddling cloth and placed on his mother's chest. And the first thing this baby did was to grab for the mother's breast. And immediately he did put, struggled to locate the breast and then put it in his mouth. Where has he got that wisdom from? That wisdom is natural, is common sense, is there with everyone right from birth. Put those hands together for the Almighty God. And it is this scripture that put a lie to what philosophers at the beginning said. Beginning with Aristotle up onto John Locke. John Locke in particular established and said, mind is a tabula rasa. And you know, by tabula rasa, what he meant to say is that when you were born, your mind was blank. There was no wisdom in it. But that is not true. Man is not a tabula rasa. There is something inside it, right from on high. A God that can think will not create an individual that cannot think. Because like must beget like. So there is earthly wisdom that is common sense. You know, my challenge is that majority of human beings on the earth operate with common sense. They don't think. And I can prove it to you that oftentimes you look at somebody who is 30 years old and ask me, how many times has he ever thought in his life? You may not be able to find one time. Let me, let me prove that to you. He was born, but he did not choose the family to, to, to which he was born. So he did not think to be born. Two, he went to Northern Primary School and it was not his decision. Somebody else took that decision on his behalf, his parents. Three, he went to secondary school, he didn't even fill the form. Majority of, of you didn't fill your form, your parents did. So it was not your decision, he didn't think. Sadly, choice of university, he was not the one who chose it. Now, you want to hear even the choice of course, somebody else did. And then by the time he, gra he has graduated at 23, let's say, he is going to national service not because he desired to go there, but because he needed to follow the trend. He has not thought the first 23 years of his life. And then by the time he returned from service at 24, if she's a lady, as she's returning, one year after that, they are telling her, your mates are getting married. And then the next man that comes away, she will say, yes, she's, she wants to get married. That is not a thought. That is following the trend. It is common sense. The job he or she is going to do, no, when MTN is advertising for there is vacancy, he sends his app application or his application. AIT, he sends it. That's broadcast media. That one is telecom. GT Bank, she said, that's banking industry. Covenants, that is opening, sent, that's education industry. There is a farm behind his house. They are looking for accountant. You send it. That's, that's agri-industry. 
put it behind the house, his house, they need a PRO. You sense it. That's animal husbandry. <laughs> so he has not really taken any time to think he or she is operating with common sense. But you know one thing, people of God, common sense begets common result. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Number two kind of wisdom is sensual wisdom. And this we acquire, or this, is, this we acquire by our social interaction or our academic exposure. And number three kind of wisdom is devilish wisdom, which is diabolical. This is what all the magicians and astrologers and people who are, who are looking for help, we are help that cannot be found, engaged in doing. But at the end of this one, there is always destruction at the end of it. If the devil gives you 100 naira, you can rest assured he will collect from you 10,000 naira. The devil has no free gift for any man. The only one that can give you free gift is God, who gave you his only begotten son for free, even when you are yet sinners. Glory be to God. And then, of course, number four wisdom is divine wisdom. This is godly wisdom. This is the wisdom from above. And in verse 17 of that scripture, James 3 and verse 17, we see the import of this kind of wisdom. In verse 17, it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, then gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Full of good fruit. There is no other kind of wisdom that has good fruit like this. And that is why every one of us must strive to operate at this realm, the realm of divine wisdom. And that is why we have devoted this month to navigating the various nuances of wisdom. And it is my prayer that God of heaven will help us in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Last week, we looked at the subject matter of inspiration. This morning, we are looking at the subject matter of meditation. What is meditation? Meditation is the art of pondering through scriptures in search of answers to the bugging questions of life. The art, A-R-T, of pondering through scriptures in search of answers to the bugging questions of life. Why do we need to search through scriptures to find answers to the bugging questions of our life? It is because the word of God is the bank of God's wisdom. Inside this book is packaged the wisdom that makes for exemplary life. When we search through the pages, we are able to rub mind with God on what we need to prefer solutions to the questions bugging our lives. A wise man once said that you are not going to be any different in 20 years time but for two reasons. The people you meet, you meet or you mix with and the books that you read. And this word of God is the book of all books. From this book, every other code in life draws. Go, go and check every law book, every constitution on the face of this earth. Even in the Arab world, takes root from this book. You know, because by our own search, we also, dis we also discover that even Quran is the draw from what is in this place. This is the foundation of wisdom. When we imbibe the content of it, we will also operate with God kind of wisdom. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, this book of the law, and Joshua was referring to the word of God, the Bible. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. He said, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You desire good success, be a student of the Bible. 
You desire a life that is devoid of evil. Be a student of the Bible. You want to live life that is above the, the realm where the enemy can shoot an arrow against you. Be a student of the Bible. When you dip yourself into this book, there is no depth that you cannot call to. You know, the scripture makes us to understand that deep calleth unto the deep. And the matters of life are not on the surface. If you see anyone around your streets, by the drainage around your streets, with a hook, line, sinker, and the stick, and he tells you that he's fishing, don't trouble yourself, he's looking for tadpoles. That's the only thing he will find by the drainage around your house. If you need a shark, for example, men, you need to get to the high sea. The best of life cannot be found on the surface. That's why nobody finds oil on the surface. You need to dig down. And it is the provision of the world that can navigate the depth of life. The power that is behind this world and navigate the depth of life. It is my prayer that the Lord God of heaven will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why is this meditation so important? It is because it is the thinking through scriptures. Towards finding solutions to our challenges. That can give us the life that we desire. Thinking through scriptures. To locate answer to the challenges of your life. Thinking through scriptures, thinking through scriptures, thinking through scriptures, thinking through scriptures. But most of the time, we are too restless to be able to sit down to think through. Those who think through, they learn the art of sitting down to locate answers. The Bible says, who among you will want to build a tower, who will not first of all sit down? So, in other words, rising up as its foundation is sitting down. You cannot rise. You know, in, you know, in Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 1, the Bible says, Arise, shine, for the light is come. You can't arise until you first of all sit down to think. Sit down to think. Sit down to think. Sit down to think. In one of our chancellors, chancellors, offices, he has a place. When you enter his office, there is another door. You enter behind him, there is a door. That is, you are wondering, where is this door leading to? That, that, that step, that door leads to a, a smaller room. He calls the room, thinking room. What does he do in that place? He goes there to think. When he enters that place and he shuts the door, you don't knock it. He is thinking through hard matters. And when he comes out from that, from that thinking room, amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. They ask the sage, chief, about my Olawa, you know, bless my memory, and, and said, what do you do in your night time? And you know his response. He said, in the night time, I think through the day. By the time the day breaks, I am ahead of my peers. What his other peers will begin to do at, in the morning, he is gone beyond that. They are meeting him in the evening. He has gone. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Except we are able to apply this mystery, we may not be able to get much, even out of salvation. Glory be to God. In Psalm 119 and verse 97. The psalmist says, say, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. And who is this psalmist? This psalmist is an individual who had fought the greatest number of battles that you can think of among all the among all the personalities in scriptures. David fought the greatest number of battles. You want to hear, David never lost any of them. 
He said that it is his meditation all the day. He will be thinking through scriptures to be able to know the right step to take. One time he asked the Lord, he said, these people have come, should I pursue them? Will you give them into my hand? That's thinking through. He didn't just carry his, his asana and say he's pursuing them. And then the Lord spoke to him. Pursue them, you will surely overtake and recover all. The other time he asked me, Lord, should I pursue them? He said, no, don't pursue them. Draw a compass round about them. And when you see the movement of the mulberry tree, then rise. That is from his ability to sit down to think. But how many of us will take that time to sit down and think? How many of us will take that time to sit down and think? How many of us will take that time to sit down and think? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thinking through scriptures to find the way out of our predicament, that is meditation. No matter what the situation could be, there is always an answer in scriptures. But we need to sit down first to engage with the provision of that scripture for us to be able to draw the answer that we desire from him. It is my prayer, the Lord God of heaven will reach out to each one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What are the channels of this wisdom? Number one, prayer of inquiries. Number one channel of this kind of wisdom is prayer of inquiries. That is prayer that asks questions. The one who asks questions is the one that desires an answer. If you cannot ask a question, then you are not a candidate for answer. In Matthew 7:7, 7, 7, the Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. So if you don't ask, it cannot be given unto you. If you don't ask, it cannot be given unto you. How do we ask? We ask through prayer of inquiry. James chapter 1 and verse 7 and verse 5. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And if you like, it shall be given her. If any of you lack wisdom, but you see, it also takes wisdom for you to understand that you lack it. It takes wisdom for you to understand that you lack it. A student that understands that he, is, that he lacks something will not wait until the day of examination to be looking for it. Right from day one that school resumes, the semester begins. Your quest for 5.0 result at the end of the semester actually begins from that time, not when it is two weeks to exam. Those who prepare two weeks to exam, they don't end up with 5.0 results. They don't end up with 5.0 results. I've often said to us students, I've written a number of exams in my life. I've never failed one of all the exams I've written in my life. I've never had carryover. I've never had a receipt. But have I faced tough time in examination? I faced plenty. But by his grace, I overcame all. By the time I returned to do my master's, by divine direction, because I didn't plan to come back and do any master's. I did first degree, and I felt the trouble of first degree was enough to, lie, to last a lifetime, especially if you have attended the kind of university that I attended. First degree is as if you are doing something that is above PhD. So I felt I've had enough trouble. Until when God said, I should go back, and I did. And by the time he asked me to go back, I already have three children. I was the husband of one wife, father of three people. Okay? But the wisdom from on high bailed me out. As at that time, I was already a provincial pastor. If you are talking about time, what I did not have was time. And if you cannot commit time to academic pursuit, you can't make anything out of it. And by his wisdom, I look at my time and the Holy Spirit helped me 
to be able to apportion it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, academic work. By Wednesday evening, we will have service. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday till 4 p.m., academic work. From 4.01 p.m. on Wednesday till the next Monday by 8 a.m., okay, any other assignment. But one thing, people of God, from that morning of Monday, I could sit down from 8.30, 9 a.m. in the morning, and I may not get up until 8 p.m. in the evening. No food, no nothing. The only thing to get up would be to go to the gents if I needed to do so. But that was the price that was paid to be able to get the price. But here we are. Student, when exam is in two weeks, he or she is looking for his notes. He said it is ECN 201. I don't know where the note is. Do you also know where the grade is? If you can't find the note, you have lost the grade. Thinking through. Thinking through. There was nothing you could do in this world. That period that I needed to concentrate on my academics, you can't get my attention. No matter what will happen in this world, you will not be able to get my attention. And at the end of it all, Today, we give glory to God that we're able to pass through that crucible. You also, you will make it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, the scripture says, Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And every student should understand this singular scripture. The reason I love to use this scripture for personal supplication in the morning during chop is because it carries with it everything that any well-meaning student desires. Because there are things you may not understand that you need God to just step in and help you out. You say, call unto me, but if you cannot call, then you cannot get an answer. What, are the, what is the other channel of divine wisdom? Having a heart for God. When you have a heart for God, then God can make his resources available to you. And one of these cardinal, one cardinal resource that God will make available to you is divine wisdom. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. Talking about Saul. He said, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. He said, the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. God is always looking for somebody who is after his own heart. When you have a heart for God, he makes the forces of heaven to be at your disposal. When you have a heart for God, the forces of heaven are at your disposal. The forces of heaven are at your disposal. The forces of heaven are at your disposal. When you have a heart for God. But when you don't have a heart for God, you will have a heart for the devil. Because there is, there is no vacuum in this world. You are either for light or you are for darkness. You cannot be in the middle. You cannot be in the middle. You are either for God or you are for his enemy. He said, your kingdom shall not continue. I pray this morning, your own destiny will continue in the name of Jesus Christ. That which God has given you, somebody else will not collect it from you. God gave Saul, but Saul lost it because his heart was not panting after God. And God said, I have seen your neighbor who is better than you. Listen to the people of God. I learned a lesson many years back through my father in the faith. He said something very topical. He said, when one man is messing up, another one is warming up. When one man is messing up, another one is warming up. And if you see the, the game of football or soccer, you will know that this is the truth. First 11, they are on the field of play. And then you see some people. They are by the sideline. You see them. You know, they are doing exercise. You will run. You will jump. You know all this prayer. God, let somebody mess up on the field. God, let that one break his leg. He also wants to exercise his skill. So the position you are occupying right now, somebody else is praying. That something will pull you up so that I can take the place. No other person will take your home place in the name of Jesus Christ. No other person will take your home place in the name of Jesus Christ. 
When I enter, I learned something from one of my superior in ministry. He said, when he enters an office, he creates enough problems for everyone around him that nobody will have any other time than to do what he needs to do. He said, when I enter into the place, I create fights that will create trouble for everyone. He said, then I'll begin to fix. He says, there is no point throughout his time that he is, he is less busy. So when I entered an office, I want to leave the place and ensure that the next person that will come into that office must work. By the, by the act seated commitment to my assignment. Act seated commitment to my assignment. People of God, let's have a heart for God. I have never needed supervision in anything that I, needed, that I needed to do. Why? Because I believe that there is someone up there that I must report to. Who is my immediate boss? A boss that sees everything you do. You can't hide anything from him. That has always placed me on the check 24-7 of the time. Given human failings, we are all humans. But we try as much as we can to ensure that those failings reduce our time. So that the one who has placed us on assignment at the end of the day will say, you have done well, my faithful servant. It is my prayer. The sound of approval will come for each one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A heart for God is one cardinal point to assess the wisdom of God. A heart for God is one cardinal point to assess the wisdom of God. And then what other way do we need to assess his wisdom? A purpose-driven meditation. Purpose-driven meditation. In Proverbs 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth without wisdom. And if you look at the example of Isaac, the Bible says at the even time, Isaac found his way to the feed, to do what? To meditate. And why, what was he meditating over? Lord, my mom is dead. My dad is stricken in age. Am I going to continue being single all this while? And the Bible says, while he was meditating, he was sitting on the field, his camel appeared. And that camel that appeared brought the desire of his heart. Rebecca came on the line. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. When, we, when our meditation is purposeful, we will get the desire of our heart. What must I do to sustain access to divine wisdom? What must I do to sustain access to divine wisdom? Number one, recognize that you need divine wisdom in the first place. Most of the time, people don't know what they need. They don't know what they need. They don't know what they need. For example, somebody say, God give me 5.0. Maybe, that, maybe that's not what you need. Maybe what you need is an, is, is an understanding heart. That makes you to be better than your teachers. The Bible says, Jesus Christ at the age of 12 sat with the doctors of law. Those were the professors and meritors of those days. Both answering and asking them questions. And they marvel, what kind of child is this? Maybe as a student you want to tap to that order of understanding. That order of superlative intelligence that can make you to, this, to find out answer to hard matters. Superlative intelligence. Superlative intelligence. Superlative intelligence. Maybe it is not A you need. Maybe it is the spirit of excellence that you need. Because when you write the right thing in an examination, the lecturer cannot mark you wrong. Not even in an environment like this. If the lecturer marks you wrong, you have the right to go back and revalidate it. To say, I think my result in this course cannot be a B. It's an A. And we have had a number of you that have done that. And at the end of the day, from F, it has crossed over to an A. 
Maybe what you need is not to ask God, Lord, give me an A in this court, give me an A in this court. God does not give finished products. He will give you raw materials for it. If you pray to God, God, I need food. And then as you are going by the roadside, you now see a bowl of uh, uh, jollof rice, steaming and chicken. Will you eat it? You will, go, you will see you run away. You are asking for money. God bless me with money and then you wake up with the money. Under your pillow, you find $50,000. You pick it, you become a goat. You won't touch it. You will, run, you will run and say, yeah. So what God gives you is not the finished product. He gives you the raw material and the intelligence to put them together. Glory be to God. So we must recognize that we have need for divine wisdom. And then what must we do to sustain it? Pray for it. Pray for sustenance. That's what we find in James chapter 1 in verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men and all women liberally. And not pray that not. And it shall be given to him or her. I trust the Lord God of heaven. This alpha semester examination. The remaining part of it. You will operate with divine wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. You will operate with divine wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. And then I also want us to understand that life does not end with our first semester examination of 2018-2019 session. There is life after that time out. So the wisdom that is from above provides the answers for you for this, your step in life. Not just for an examination. It is that understanding that must get the destiny of Esau. He only saw the challenge of one day. One day's lunch. Or supper. Give me this. I am hungry. I must eat now. The man said, give me your bat right. He said, what is bat right? I said, I'm hungry. He said, bat right. We bat right fill my stomach. I said, I don't care. But give it to me. He said, okay. Take it. Give me this lunch. The Brother gave him the entire pot. He said, go and hit it. Collected the birthright from him. The Bible says he wept for it bitterly afterwards. You won't weep in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not weep in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what happens to the individual that does not operate with divine wisdom. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hand before the Lord this morning and just give him thanks. Give him thanks, give him praise for what has transpired.